Thanks for tuning in again. So far, we have talked a little bit about the Bible. We've talked about why spiritual growth is important, that we go to the Bible for spiritual growth because it's powerful and it's effective and it's the truth and it works in our lives and in our hearts. And today, I want to get us into a little bit of practical application. When we read scripture, how can we apply it personally to ourselves? And I want to give you a framework on how to do that. Because the Bible has practical applications for your life, and it changes your hearts and your lives. And so here's the framework that I want to give you. When you're reading through scripture, the first thing I want you to do is when you pick a, a section of verses, like today we're reading through uh, Jesus feeding the 5,000. When you read through that section of verses, I want you to ask yourself this question. Where does this section of scripture cut me? Where does this make me feel bad? Where does this point out a wrong that I have done in the past? Where does this point out something that I have failed to do in the past? That's what I want you to identify first when you're reading through a section of scripture like that. And, and remember, God sees everything. He sees your thoughts. He sees your actions. He sees everything that you say, which can be an intimidating thing. And so we want to examine ourselves like God sees us and say, where have I failed to live up to what God wants from me? And that's what I feel guilty about. That's where I know that I have broken God's heart. So once I identify that based on what I'm reading, what prompts those thoughts in my reading, then I want you to confess it. That's, that's the first thing I want you to do. Confess it. And by confess, we mean to, to relieve your heart of this thing. To admit that you have sinned against God, whether it was in thought, word, or deed, or in what you failed to do, release that from your heart and give it to God. Confess it. You can go to God in prayer and confess it. You can confess it to, to a friend of yours, someone you trust that will keep your confidence. You can confess it to your pastor. Sometimes that makes you feel a little bit better. It feels like a load has been lifted off your shoulders, and that's exactly what you want to do here. When you're studying scripture for yourself and you, you find a point of scripture that makes you feel bad because you have failed to do something, we want you to confess it. Okay, then the second thing you want to do is you want to ask yourself, where does this comfort me? Where does this section heal the wounds that that first question created? Where do I see a loving God in this section of scripture? You want to ask one of those kinds of questions and identify that. And when you identify that, I want you to internalize it. This is an important, this is the most important part of your devotional reading, is to understand God's love and how that has been given to you through Christ. And in many different sections of scripture, we see and get this comfort in different ways, from different avenues, and it's all the more precious to us. It's like looking at a diamond, you kind of see it from different angles, and you see the beauty of it from different angles. That's what you get when you study different sections of scripture and you see what God has done for you. And you want to know this. You want to internalize this. And then we move on to the, the third point. What does this lead me to do? What does this motivate me to do? The motivation always comes from number two. Always comes from the healing, from the gospel. But what does this now motivate me to do? And oftentimes, it is the, the flip side of the first one. Where did this cut me? So if where I was cut was that I, I lied the other day and I feel awful about that and I confessed it to God and then I received the healing in, in the section of scripture that I was reading, the comfort of the gospel, that my sins are forgiven, that that sin of lying is forgiven. Now, what does this motivate me to do? This motivates me to go and lie no more. Don't tell any more lies. It, it motivates me to go and tell the truth and be honest with people. That's, that's number three. That's how we apply it to our life. How is my life going to be different today after reading this section of Scripture? 
Okay, so today's reading was Jesus feeding the 5,000. I want to give you a practical application of practical personal application of reading scripture. So as you're reading through the feeding of the 5,000, where does this cut me? When, when I read through it, it cut me in thinking that I don't always identify or see Jesus' power fully in my life. Sometimes I think that things are impossible because I haven't seen Jesus do miraculous things like that. I've heard about them in the Bible, but I fail to see Jesus' power in my life sometimes. And so I confess that sin, that the sin of failing to see Jesus' power in my life, failing to recognize that power, and you could probably call that doubt in some ways, too. And so that's where this section cuts me. You notice the disciples, when they were for, faced with this problem of how are they going to feed this many people, they were trying to come up with how they might do it on their own. They first went to money and thought, well, we're not going to be able to buy all this food for these people. And then they saw this boy that had fish and bread, and they said, well, what's this going to do among so many people? When standing next to them was Jesus, God in the flesh, who, who could do anything. Yet instead of looking to, to him, they looked to their own human ingenuity to try to solve this problem. That's where I'm cut. I often rely on my human ingenuity. Okay, number two, where am I healed here? Where do I see God's love here? Jesus didn't yell at the disciples. He, he, didn't, even see, he didn't even discipline them at all. He, he let them wrestle with this problem. But then... In his love, he performed this miraculous miracle in front of them. He multiplied the bread and the fish and he fed the people to an abundance. There were leftover baskets of food afterwards. And what this tells me about God is that God is a God who provides for his people. He cares for his people and he is fully able to do that. And not only does he provide just barely what we need, he gives more and more and more. And so in my life, I can see how God has blessed me and provided me with many different things. I can also see how he's provided me with everything spiritually and that he's given to me in abundance, more grace than I could ever imagine. That's the grace that, that heals me, that heals the doubt that I confessed before. Now, third, what does this lead me to do? This section of scripture, Jesus feeding the 5,000, leads me to give thanks for the things that God has given me. That I am so blessed in my life, and, and I often think about the things that I don't have, but I want to start thinking about the things that I do have and give thanks for that. And I want to trust that God is a God who provides and gives and he cares about me. So you can see how, how easy it is to walk through that, that progression. And you can do this with any section of scripture. Now, now, just one disclaimer. As you read through the Bible, the Bible was not set up in this framework. Many sections of scripture, you will find some things that make you feel guilty. And then you'll have to wait a little bit longer to hear the healing. And then there will be some sections of scripture that is all healing. And there's not really a part where it points out a specific sin. That's okay. The Bible is written as God's word. It's powerful. It's effective. This is just a useful tool to help us apply these things to ourselves personally. I pray that this is a benefit to you and that this helps you grow in your own personal Bible study. God bless you.